First thing, remember, body fat is just a number. Don't get too anal about it. Don't go home thinking, shit, I'm this body fat, I'm that body fat, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. It's just a number, okay? It's like stepping on scales. Ideally, we want to try and move away from using scales and body fat because if, you're, if you train hard for four weeks, if you do your body fat or step on the scales and it's gone up, how do you feel? Even though you've trained hard for four weeks. So as long as you kind of trust the process and you're doing everything right, does it matter what your body fat is? Does it matter what your weight is? Not really, does it? But we're just using this to get the calculations for your macros. So, everyone's got their body fat, yeah? So first we need to work out your lean body mass. So this is basically um, how much muscle you have on your body. Um, so simple equation, 100, take away your body fat. Okay? I'm gonna see if I could do, um, do someone's number. Julie? Wait. 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 I'll just do someone's. I'll do yours, Bucket. I'll do yours. <laughs> so 33.3. Uh, 100 take away 33.3 equals 66.6. Okay? Everyone do that first. Can I ask what the 33.3 is? Is that body fat? That's, that's body fat. I told you your body fat. There's your body fat. Right, right, there. Everyone got that? Stage one. Okay, 66.6 times your weight in pounds. Do you know how to work out weight in pounds? Google or do your kilos times by 2.2. So what's yours, Luce? 72.2. 72.5. Equals... 159.5. Let me want to times it by 0.66. So there's the number. We put a naught in front of it, and that's what we times it by. So that equals 105.27. Has everyone done that stage? No. Why? <laughs> so, right. First thing, body fat. 100 take away your body fat equals a number. Keep that, keep that number, okay? This is your weight in kilos times 2.2 to give you weight in pounds. Everyone got that number? Stick a note in front of your body fat. Sorry, in front of this number here. So, see there? From that to that. Or move this. Listen, accountant. So then I've got 0.66. That equals 105. For me. For Felicia, yeah. <laughs> if you're struggling, guys, speak to one of the coaches. <coughs> Everyone got that? Yeah? Okay, so that's basically saying Lucy's BMR is 105 pounds. Yeah. Lean body mass, 105 pounds, sorry. Yeah. We're not, we don't need to be anal over this. We don't need to be <laughs> anal. It's like, it's like having a tablespoon of sugar and adding a little bit more in. We don't need to be like that. Okay, then we want to calculate your BMR. So everyone's got their number here in pounds. Yeah? Divide that by 2.2. Why are we doing that? Correct. We just we just moved that back to kilos. The low number. That's lean body mass. That is that is that in kilos. Has everyone got that? Yeah. Yep. So now BMR. What's BMR? Anyone know? And what and what's that, Rach? Yeah, so how much your body needs basically just to stay alive. Simple bodily functions. So your BMR, we times this number by 21.6. I don't know who worked up these equations. It wasn't me. Times the weight in kilos by 
plus 370. Lucy's is coming up at 1,400. So that's calories. That's basically, she needs 1,400 calories based on her lean body mass to stay alive. Okay, have we done that? Who's struggling? Put the hand up. Right, guys, have we done that bit? Good. Right. So all you guys, I think, uh, yeah, most of you guys are on. Basically, so this is your BMR. So, so this is what it takes for you to stay alive. We then want to add some calories onto that based on how much exercise you do in the gym or out of the gym. We basically have it set at 1.25, which is like an increase of 25% if you're on the fit, 35% if, you, if you're doing um, the strong. But this obviously doesn't take into consideration if you do anything outside the gym, if you go for a run, if you go for a walk. So bear in mind, these are just numbers. If you start this and you feel like you're not eating enough because you're doing 50 miles a week outside, this doesn't include this, so that will have to be added on, okay? Um, so that can be obviously be, we can speak about that maybe on like a one-to-one -one basis if you feel um, the calories aren't quite right. So with that number, times it by 1.25. Right, have we all got that? Yeah. So for Lucy doing her program, she says we need, she needs 18, 1,890 calories per day. But we're going to then in add into this your body fat. So just to put you into a slight deficit. So you can see below, you've got your body fat on the left and how much of a deficit to put you in on the right. So Lucy, for example, is 33. Sorry, Lucy. So... Like on the women's side, it says 30% or more to, to drop the calories by 20%. Okay, so there's a number. I'm going to times that by 0 0.8, and this will give her calories. No, that's based for Lucy. If, you, if you're over 30%, so yeah. Has everyone done that? So, everyone's probably thinking that's low calories. So that is in a deficit. Remember that, that is in a slight deficit. But who's, put the hand up, who's, who's tracked your calories before? Who's used my fitness pal? And you're on it. Um, do you find the calories that are coming up are lower or higher than what you would normally eat? Higher? Because the first thing that you want to do with food is obviously track your food. Everyone's going to be looking at that thinking, I can't eat that amount or that's too much. Or, but who's eating the way that we're going to tell you to eat now based on the certain macros we're going to tell you to eat? Right. 1371. I'll have a look at yours in a minute, okay? So those are the calories. Now we want to work out how much protein to eat, how much carbs to eat, how much fat to eat. We're going to base protein on, guys, will be 0 0.8 per gram pound of body weight and girls will be 0 0.7 per pound of per what pound a day yeah protein who thinks they, they eat enough protein in their diet no. no a lot of girls won't a lot of girls don't the first thing that like first thing girls will do if they, if they increase their protein will start to start to lose body fat fairly quick just just through kind of retaining more muscle from you know from eating more like a higher protein based diet so Girls usually do under eating protein. Um, so, based on that, Lucy's weight, 72.2. So, gu guys, times it by 0 0.8, girls, times it by 0 0.7. This is your weight in pounds. Got that? Yeah? <laughs> Got that? Yeah? So, what we're going to put you on is a, a lower carb diet. 
Lower carb, higher fat diet for the first two weeks. Has anybody done like a low carbish diet before? When you do low carb, do you normally go quite low calorie though? Do you bump your fats up the other way? So the reason why, why we want to go low carb is just to reset your insulin sensitivity. So when you have carbs, you can use them better. Carbs are looked at as the devil, or they were looked at as the devil. People went no carbs and they went high carbs. You got to teach your body how to use carbs as fuel. Carbs is basically your primary fuel source. So if you're constantly eating them all the time, your body's going to use them for energy, kind of break them down. What we want to do is take them away a little bit, teach your body how to break down the fat into fatty acids that, that then can be used for fuel. If you keep putting carbs into your system, that's never going to happen. So you take them out for a period of time, then you slowly bring them back in when the time is best to bring them back in, usually post-training or in the evening, that type of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah? So you're never going to teach your body to use your, your body fat as fuel as long as you're putting the carbs in it. So we, we just want to try and re-educate it a little bit. So we're going to be setting your carbs for the first two weeks at 50 grams. That sound low? Does that sound high to people? Yeah. It is quite low, yeah. So all the good stuff is gone. <laughs> per day. So add those two numbers together. Times it by four. Your protein and your carbs. Times by four. So this is basically saying that um, you got Lucy's carbs and protein is 161 times the four is 646 calories because carbs and protein both equate to one gram of them is four calories. Okay, so they take up that amount from her daily allowance. Yeah. <coughs> so everyone's got the calories for the carbs and the protein. Yeah. So now we want to work out your fat. Use this number. So Lucy's would be 1512. Take away the calories we just worked out. So to work out your fat, you want to use your, your main calorie number. Yeah. Take away the one that you just worked out. Oh, yeah. Carbs and protein. Yeah. That equals 866. Oh, there you go. Everyone got that one? So how many calories does fat have per gram? Nine. So we divide that number by nine. So 866 divided by nine equals 96 grams. <coughs> Everyone have that? So now Lucy's food will look on a daily basis. Everyone got that? So that's basically saying that on a daily basis, this is what she needs to eat. In grams. In grams. Is everyone there? Everyone made it? So everyone knows their macros to eat now. So now you're probably thinking, why should I eat fat to burn fat? Fat's good. Who knows where to find sources of fat? So it's all in the level one manual. So your homework is to read that, understand it all. So protein, 111 grams, carbs, 50, fat, 96. Then say if Lucy eats twice a day, she's got to get that in two meals. If she eats three times a day, put it in three meals. So this is obviously where you need to try and be selective on, on your lifestyle and how you eat and where you're going to fit it in, OK? Who, who knows how to use my fitness pal? Put the hand up. So, if you haven't got my, my fitness pal, download it. Um, what I'll do is, I'll put some instructions on how to use it. Don't go by their stats or anything, because they'll say, do you want to lose weight, do you want to do this? All we want to use my fitness pal for is to track these numbers. So, your my fitness pal will be just 
basically what you eat, put it in, scan it, whatever, things like that, and then it will tell you how many grams of whatever is in each food. So carbs here at 50 grams, that's basically going to be all vegetables really. Light colour fruits are going to be out, it's going to be more berries, um, the darker fruit. Um, any questions on that there? Does it all make sense? Everyone's looking at me like, I can't eat that or I don't want to eat that or that's, that's going to be hard. Does anyone think that's going to be hard to eat? Why is it, why is it going to be hard? Yeah, so the first five days are probably going to be the hardest because you might feel a bit lethargic, you might feel tired because you haven't got that sugar in your system. Your body needs to work hard to break it down. So if you can get through the first five days, you're going to be flying after that. So we'll do this for the first two weeks. Second two weeks, we'll increase your carbs. And thereafter, we'll, we'll then tell you to, depending on how, on, on how you're getting on, whether to increase them a bit more, stabilize out. For this first bit, it depends what else you eat. So if you just turn over, if you just turn over that sheet. So on the back, just some basic things I put down. In 100 grams of sweet potato was 20 grams of carbs. In 100 grams of white potato was 17 grams of carbs. So you can see where carbs are, but be careful because there are a lot of hidden carbs out there as well. You'll scan stuff and you'll be like, shit, I didn't know that I had that much sugar in, or I didn't know this had this in. So this is a learning experience for you. You'll scan foods, you'll start reading labels, and you'll start to understand where foods are. And then you'll start to realize that to, to truly understand what you're going to eat, you've got you to kind of cook it yourself, you've got to prep it yourself. No buying all the meals that you might see out there. Um, one thing I will say is your fibre. When we start getting a few more carbs in and stuff, we've got to make sure that, you eat, that you're eating plenty of fibre because you could eat 50 grams of carbs just with 50 grams of white sugar. Well, obviously, that's what we don't want. We want to have, have fibre in to keep the bowels healthy. Let's not get talking about about bowels again, shall we? Um, so is everyone clear on that? Yeah. yeah, everyone's happy with that? So this is a learning experience. So has everyone joined the inner circle, the Facebook inner circle? Kate said she sent a text to you all with a link on it. Click on that. What I also want you to do is go to Facebook now. Everyone jump on Facebook. Search for the 28 day challenge. If you haven't got your phone on you, then just do this later. Search for the 28 day challenge. And I want you to ask to be in the group. So this is a group where you can share how you're feeling, you can share your food, you can share things that you have found, any issues, any questions, we'll be there to answer it. So what do we expect from you? Obviously we expect you to track your food, so using my fitness pal, ideally I would like you all to track your food for the next 28 days. Okay. Yeah? So track food for 28 days, then, then obviously at the end of 28 days we can look back and say, well actually no, you didn't do that right, you didn't do that right. Because sometimes when you think you're eating well, unless you put it into a system, you could be way off. Um, simple things like on a daily basis, think about your sleep quality, stress, stress at work, stress at home, stress with the women, stress with kids, <laughs> stress with the men. Um, all sorts of stress have such a big impact on training, on how you feel, um, your food, how it's gone throughout the day, strength levels, energy levels. So during the first week, you might have a bit, like, a bit of a dip in, it in like, your energy levels. So just kind of monitor it, see how it, see how it improves. Um, and then just life in general, whether you're feeling good, whether you're feeling like maybe it's not for you or whatever. Any questions, we're all here to help. Um, always ask us questions if you want to change something or if, if you want to tweak something. Um, but apart from that, you're just going to get out there and learn, learn for yourselves, because that's the only way that you're really going to truly understand what, what diet or what food will work for you. 28 days is a start. 28 days is not going to fix six, 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 seven years of bad habits. 28 days will get you into, into good habits. You'll meet a lot of good people. You'll learn some new training, training techniques. From that, we can hopefully then try and build on it. That's the idea anyway. Um, does anyone have any last questions? Apart from you. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look. So, everyone has that thing of starting tomorrow, don't they? Starting Monday, let's start tomorrow. But it depends whether you've got your food in to start tomorrow. So first thing, everyone probably needs to go shopping. I'll be 
Everyone needs to go shopping, buy a lot of protein, buy a load of good fats, and a load of green vegetables, ideally. That's, that's a good starting place, okay? Well, thank you very much for coming, and let's see you next week.